driving to a graveyard. Too early in the morning. Spectating funky fights. Oh, wow, wow. This is and in the midst of sporting controversies. How did I get here? Uh, why am I so difficult? Ross, I like to pay you to the life. As a single woman at 42, this is my life right now, okay? It's all because I signed up to be a creepy crawly collector. I'm Ross, and I love experiencing all things unusual and unexpected. <laughs> so I am on the hunt for some of the weirdest. Oh my God. Yeah. Can I get out of here? Wildest and wackiest hobbies in Singapore. This means spending time with people I never knew existed. Oh, intense, man. And exploring sides of Singapore I never thought I would. Wow, this is really nice. All to learn how to be a fringe fan. <laughs> You know, when I found out that this episode was all about wildlife fans, I thought we we're going to be hunting down the dolphins in the southern islands. Instead, all I got were these isopods. Iso what, you say? Well, these tiny bug-like creatures are usually found under rotting wood, but have somehow crawled into the hearts of some Singaporeans. Even me. And it all began with this guy. You know, Eric, I ate an isopod before in Japan, oh. deep fried, and it was like this big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those those are marine isopods. Okay. But for this, these are purely land. Okay. The only true land crustacean. The reason I am hanging out with Eric is this. I am on the hunt for fans of flora and fauna in Singapore, but not your usual otters and hornbills. They're too mainstream. No, I'm looking for collectors of the creepy crawlies. For Eric, it's isopods. He began this hobby two years ago, starting with 300 isopods. Today? Five to 8,000. And the number of species I have is around 35. How did you get into collecting isopods? I mean, it's all over your living room. <laughs> I started with plants. The spotting soil actually have some small critters running around. I did a search and realized that some isopods they actually help to speed up the decomposing, break down dead leaves, dead materials. It is not just their gardening skills that attracts Eric to these critters. Isopods come in many different colours, and Eric wants to collect them all. So much so that he has bought and traded isopods that come from over 10 different countries. The enjoyment part will be when you see them start mating, mm -hmm. having babies. There's many different colours, mm -hmm. even from the same species. Okay. <gasps> Ooh! There's the orange, the white, Why? the Dalmatian type. Wow! So part of isopod is that we can do different colour morph. Here's how it works. When two of his zebra isopods make babies, the babies would usually look like zebras. But occasionally, more white-looking or more black-looking babies are born. Some babies might even be of a different colour because of random mutation. By matching these special babies, breeders get unique colours and patterns that previously did not exist. And that's how he convinced his wife to share their home with his 8,000 pets. To get my wife approval, yeah. I actually bring in the yellow feather rubber ducky. Oh, this is damn cute! Yeah. Are they very sensitive to touch? Uh, for this particular species, Can yes. I flip them around? Will they bite? Uh, they won't bite. Oh! <laughs> Eric built his terrariums to serve as homes for his isopods. They need a dry and moist gradient. Soy, dried leaf, followed by cuttle bones. Why cuttlefish bones? Because they are crustacean. Their exoskeleton are made of calcium. Mm. So all these calcium supplements will ease their shedding and molting. Mm. Smack the cork bug in. Okay, so this is like their roof. Yep. Okay. And that's all. A surprise for you, I actually prepare two sets for you to try on. Wow. Hey, this is black and white. The scientific name is Amadididium maculatum. This is there another species. Oh my god, it's so cute! Yeah. Okay, see, mm. these things look better when there's patterns and colours on it. Mm. So this is for me to what? Take back? Yeah, take back, have fun. Any final tips before I take this into my hands? <laughs> 
for real. <laughs> start making a lot of space because you'll start keeping more and more. So I'm not a pets person. I kill all living things that come under my care. And these isopods are supposed to be low maintenance, but you watch me screw this up, man. Some don't even look like they're moving. I think I better do a count first, just so I get some sort of progress report. It's about like one, two, three, four, five, six. I think there's about 10 in here, 10 that are still alive. Wish me luck. My job for the next four weeks is not only to keep them alive, but also try to breed some funky colours. All right, guys, I'm just going to pick up a cord buck just to show you. They're not even moving, right? And Eric says to watch out because in the coming weeks, they're going to multiply, although I don't know how they're going to do that because they're not even moving. We'll just have to wait and see. OK, maybe I'm not completely sold on isopods yet. But turns out there is quite a sizable community of people crazy about these crustaceans. To date, this Facebook group has over 600 members. And guess what? They're not the only creepy crawly interest group in town. From ants, snails, and even stick insects, there are all forms of interest groups forming around creepy crawlies. But there's one particular creepy crawly group in Singapore that has caught my eye. So this group's focus is on fighting spiders. And to be honest, the only fighting spiders I've heard of is that drama on Channel 5 some time back. But what I find interesting about this group is that they have categories like middleweight and heavyweight. You know, a little bit like a real boxing championship. I've reached out to some of the most experienced members of the group. Peter Ang and No Tik Kim are considered grandmasters of this sport. They've been hunting and training fighting spiders for over 40 years. And today, I'm joining them at 7 a.m. in the morning. It's too early in the morning, and I'm like surviving on four hours of sleep. And there are pretty much graves everywhere. It sounds like a perfect Sunday. I guess when it comes to recruiting new spider pugilists, these guys are dead serious. Uh, really must come all the way out here to look for fighting spiders. Uh. We like here most. Uh, and why so early? <laughs> early in the morning, the spiders still inside their nest. Until the sunlight come out, they will have movement mm -hmm. to look for food. Normally, the plants here are teeming with potential spider warriors. But the rain has driven them into hiding. So while waiting for the rain to stop, Peter has begun his own spider mm, training inside, session. Like Ah, this oh. is tough. Want me to training KBC now? <laughs> I imagine that training involves all these tiny little spider weights. Before a newly caught spider can enter the arachnid arena, they first have to be trained to fight. Oh, I know. Known as the Ania bamensis, the species of spiders are naturally territorial. Wow, the hens are really ready to kill, man. And would fight any intruder. Usually. They are trained now, look. It's a Sunday, even the spiders don't really want to fight. Peter's training sessions involve sparring his prized spiders That's against okay, much no, weaker training. opponents. Basically, one they can beat easily. Oh. Like this, they will win and you will have confidence. Oh. So we will train them one to two hours every session. Every day? Yes. And Until we find out that this is ready, then we will stop. How do you know that the spiders are ready? You can see that they are fierce and mm -hmm. keep chasing yeah. and their grips got the, those power grips mm -hmm. to taste ready. Peter and Kim have agreed to train up a spider for me for their next competition, but on one condition. I have to catch the spider myself. Huh? Why am I so difficult? And with the rain letting up, it's time to get my hands dirty. Okay, Lila, Lila. Wow. Wow. Can you see? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll tell you, I'll stand by in the front, then you will see slowly from this side cut. Okay. Uh, cut from below, yeah, slowly. Oh, tell her, tell her, tell her. Despite my best efforts, the spider has jumped to the ground in hiding. But Kim has a backup plan. Using cigarette smoke, Kim is trying to induce a sense of danger for the spider, forcing it to come out into the open. <laughs> this is like the most 
thing I've ever seen. Mail reading time, it's a little bit of 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 a <laughs> I caught it. Can you see? In honor of my favorite superhero, Professor X, I'm naming the spider Spider X. Can you see a marker? My spider. It should be because I'm doing it well. Okay. While my spider hunt was a success, there are days when Peter and Kim return empty handed. And with only 11% of our land spaces made up of green spaces like nature reserves and parks, spider hunting grounds are few and far between. So compared to 40 years ago, right, these kind of places, are they lesser or...? They're keeping lesser. Most of it demolished, built factories mm. or places like parks, they, they fox mm. for mosquito and there's no more. Okay. Those, those places that is not fox still have, like this place. Mm. Next, we will go to the, another place. Yeah. We might meet some friend there. Okay. This is another hunting spot. Okay. We call this place Blintek. Hey, brother! Hey! Come, come, come! This is an old man and this one. Hey! The older this one. I cannot tell there. Eh. He looks so young. Mm. 65. You're 65? You don't look 65. You look like a soldier. <laughs> <laughs> so what about this uh, catching spiders hobby? It's kept you going all these years. When we are kids, uh, we don't have computers, right? Mm. Gadgets and all this. So we play spiders. Mm. So it's like we're living a child passion. How big is this community actually? We have more than thousand. That is consistent of Hong Kong, Malaysia, Whoa. and Singapore. So I which think. country has the strongest species of spider fighting spiders? Strongest is compared to size is Hong Kong and China. Wow. If fighting, the Singapore one is more Are you better. serious? Hong Kong one is bigger but must training. A bit lazy at Yeah, a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Prior to COVID-19, Peter and his kakis will travel once or twice a year for fighting spiders to places like Malaysia and Hong Kong. But these days, all their matches happen on home turf. All these tournaments that you guys like take part in, right? Who actually organizes them? In our uh, WhatsApp group, I just say, okay, uh, today, one day, we all meet one place, we make a tournament. Mm. How do you get to the status of Grandmaster Champion? Huh? Grandmaster is, they, they all call us. <laughs> uh, they train the spider yeah. and they are the, the one who we want to meet and fight. Oh, uh, they are spider. Uh, and then you know the, the knowledge they share. Yes. They will tell yeah. us. Yeah. So out of respect, we call him the master. So. After a long day of spider hunting with friends, you would think that Peter and Kim's day is done. But these guys are going straight to this void deck for a spider showdown. And this is their arena. Today, two of Peter's spiders, Hunter 1 and Hunter 2, will be participating in a knockout competition against 14 other spiders. Okay, next fight, Hunter 1, Ben. Biscuit. Win with you all. Oh, top, 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 Intense. Wow, wow, wow. Whoa. This is intense. Okay. You lose or win? I lost. Oh, H3. Hunter 2. Wow, now really mad. Okay. Hunter 2. Hunter 2. Cool one. 
So now we're in the semi-finals. What do you think your chances are? Give it to the spider. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, let's go, man. This one. Mm. Mm. Well, this is like a BJJ hold, you know. Oh. Hunter lost, huh? This is a good fight. With one prize fighter down for the count, Peter has one gladiator left in this arachnid arena. Final match, JB and Hunter too. Woo! Your hand stretching. JB left, huh? You know, spending time with Peter and Kim today is like a throwback in time. No phones, no social media, just good old time in nature and some fighting spider action here at the Fighting Spider Arena. All I can hope is my fighting spider, Spider X, will do well when it's his time to compete. You watch me, man. But while I've been a gladiatorial spectator, my isopods back home are starting to create trouble. Uh, oh, these guys have escaped. Okay, try to pick them up. Can you see them? They have escaped through one of the holes uh. of my terrarium. Well, luckily Eric has uh, taught me how to make a new terrarium for these isopods, so I'm just gonna get to it right now. Uh, yeah, create a new home for these guys. Come on, plastic. Okay. Wow, funky. They smell like the funkiest fish snacks. If you'd asked me a month ago to take these critters into my home and raise them, the answer would have been no freaking way. But just 30 days after I've gotten them from Eric, not only am I building a new home for these fellas, I'm getting pretty good at breeding them too. 15, 16, 17, 18. Double, they double in size and population. Cool, done. <laughs> not bad of an attempt to make ISO pad for my ISO pods, if I do say so myself. But my spidey sense tells me there's much more to this hobby than what I've seen so far. Hey guys! So I'm meeting some members of Eric's isopod group. Nice to meet you. Green chapter is a place where most members will get their initial isopods, followed by all the products, all the necessary accessories. Mm -hmm. They have support in numbers, like 60, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this group are actually quite fast growing, the zebras. Okay. Mm. What do you think of this environment? Looks that compared to yours. Be honest, okay, out of 10, how much would you give me? Well, for a beginner? Oh, it's very good already. Yeah, upon 10, I'll give you maybe 7. I hate men who lie. <laughs> <laughs> Liar. <laughs> I do like a lot of uh, terrarium stars. So I always try to come here to get ideas on how to build them. And would you say this is one of your better works? Uh, no, 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 no. This, this is, is average. Uh. This is purely the most simplest. What? You can actually choose a different shape of wood. It definitely will help your setup uh, look better. Okay, so what is it about I suppose that is keeping you all going? I really like their colours, so I contacted Eric and got my first set of isopods from him. Initially, my mother wasn't supportive, <laughs> but then when she started seeing like the various uh, colour moths, right, she started to accept it. Uh. I noticed that you labelled your box cheese isopod, yeah. lemon blue. This was due to my mother, so the cheese isopod was her first comment when she saw lemon blue. Oh my goodness! 
They're so cute. Yeah, very beautiful colour and contrast. Isopod is still being newly discovered every year. On average, I think it's around 10 species, new species being discovered. Mm -hmm. Lemon blues are actually discovered 2018 and 2019. They're very expensive, right? 35, 40 per piece. Per piece, per isopod? Yes. Oh my goodness. Was this the colour more or is it just the, the way it is uh, born? For this one, it's the way it is. So mine are zebra isopods. Yeah. What is my, my zebra's potential? Like what colours can they eventually become? I believe there's a lot. Yeah. Okay, but currently, we have two confirmed. Okay. okay. The white and the yellow. Then how come mine didn't turn white? Uh, it actually takes some time. Do you colour morph on your, your so cheese? No. Um, I don't colour morph these, so it's more like uh, keeping them alive because they are generally a more sensitive species. They actually require certain things that are found in their natural habitat, like limestone. I found this out through um, asking the community for advice uh, regarding what they need. It is a constant learning journey. Mm. Initially, I felt quite alone. None of your friends were into it? Yeah, none of them. They all thought that they looked like cockroaches. Yeah. So I think the general public doesn't look upon insects uh, favourably. So you felt alone and then you find these guys who are like super interested. Yes. They help you, like give you tips on how to maintain. Right, they guided me a lot. Do you foresee yourself giving this hobby up anytime? Personally, no. You think this is going to be a lifelong commitment? Yes, correct. So that was a very interesting meeting. When I first met Eric, right, I understood his love for isopods from his aspect. But now, after meeting his friends, whether it's Leon's love for terrariums or Jamie's need for a community, I get why they stick together. You know, to keep isopods alive, to get to know more about them, and to produce more colour morphs. That said, though, I don't see myself as part of this community. Although I do enjoy making terrariums. But spiders though, that's a whole new story altogether. So much so that I'm organizing my very own fighting spider competition. Over the past two weeks, Peter has been training spider eggs. And today is competition day. This is your spider. This one? Yes. At first, we train quite often. Mm -hmm. After that, when you know that he's stable, then you once a week, twice a week, just to warm up. I'm excited to see what mad moves Spider X will have. Today, he's up against 15 other spiders. Next match, Nick B and Ross Spider X. Lock is coming. King Kong. Wow. All right, Nick, you're going to. Wow, so big. Uh. That's actually pretty. All right, Nick, are you scared? Huh? Yes. <laughs> Spider X left, B right. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Boom! Thank you, Peter. AG9 <laughs> and Spider X. Look at this winner right here. Oh, low is the bigger. Oh, is this the middle weight? Did you guys weigh in as spiders before? Hey, hey, come on, Spider X. My spiders got sets. Oh. 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 Okay, this was like obviously not fair. Yes. <laughs> that spider that I was fighting against was definitely a heavyweight. Okay? Alright, basket! Basket, we got such thing. Where's the weighing machine? Okay. <laughs> well, that wasn't a fairy tale ending I was hoping for Spider X, but Peter Spider B and T still has a chance. Okay, next match, LM1 and B and T. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's not my idea. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Oh, silent killer. Peter, we both lost. No, you have not lost. Actually, I, I think you should make to the final, but you made that guy's that one is too big. Yeah, right? Peter said it, it must be true. Alright guys, it's the finals. It's middleweight versus heavyweight. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's G9, it's G9. The spider that beat me better win, huh? <laughs> just saying, uh, I'm gonna lose in vain. Alright. Come on, come on. 
Did you win? All right. Maybe we win. I lost to a winner. I'll take whatever. Well done, man. And the winner is. So we both lost. But you know what they say. If you fall, just pick yourself up again on all eight legs. Because there will be another competition for Spider X and I to prove ourselves. And this thrill of competition is what keeps Peter going for over four decades. Coming into this episode of Creepy Crawlies, I didn't know what to expect, okay? Even after meeting Peter and Kim, couldn't wrap my head around why they would spend hours every weekend hunting down fighting spiders. And the eye support community as well. I feel like I've gained an appreciation of the little hidden wonders that are all around us, if we only knew where to look. To a point where I find myself here <laughs> with a container hunting my own spiders. And this time, I'm gonna join them for a rematch. You just watch me.